Hey, this is Jewel Taker from the Jewel Taker Show on Impact Network. Also, you can watch me and my family on The Tankers on Prime Amazon or watch me and my sister's Chatter Talk Show on Fox. So me and my girls, Dr. D.D. Freeman, Monique Islet Mosley, Real Talk Kim, and Holly Carter. And you're watching Rudy Radio. You're listening to Rudy Radio, powered by Rude Rangers Entertainment. I'm Tara Renee from African American Women in Cinema Organization, and this is Talk with Tara, a show that highlights fantastic filmmakers, artists, and entertainers from all walks of life. We're committed to introducing you to individuals, organizations, and projects of which you're not necessarily aware. And we do this with the intention of uplifting, empowering, and enlightening you. If you can, please share this episode on all of your social media. We also love it if you text your friends and ask them to tune in. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you are in for a wonderful treat. We have a wonderful, beautiful artist uh, by the name of Imani, and she is here to talk uh, with me today, and you all get to listen. <laughs> Welcome, Miss Imani. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing? <laughs> I am doing good. Let me tell you, I have to tell you, uh, you are blowing up the spot. Uh, folks have been reaching out to me saying, oh, when is Imani going to be on your show? I said, well, we got to work all this stuff out. <laughs> <laughs> so Imani, what drew you into the entertainment industry? Well, I started acting when i was nine years old and wow a painfully shy child oh. and for some reason when i was on stage i just became so confident and i wow. just blossomed on there i think it's because i had a script so i knew what i was going to say <laughs> there was a director who told me where i was going to go so i didn't have to worry about anything i could, I could just be someone else mm -hmm. um and that gave me comfort and then i also found out that i was good at it so i just continued <laughs> I had a very vivid imagination, so to be able to do this professionally, just imagination and to create things, I think that's just a dream come true. That is awesome. What was, I'm curious now, what's the name of that play? <laughs> oh, it was Demeter and Persephone. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. All right. So you got bit by the acting, well, you got bit by the entertainment bug. That's what I heard uh, J. Lo call it, the entertainment bug. Okay. So then what happened after that? So then I continued on and I actually got my first professional acting gig on TV on HBO's The Wire. Wow. I was 14 at the time. Oh, wow. And that was very exciting. Um, I didn't realize how much of an impact that show would have on people. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm so happy and thankful that I got to be a part of it. And then I, I'm from Baltimore, actually. Oh, really? I'm okay, so that helped. Mm -hmm. I don't have the accent, but I'm definitely from Baltimore. And I continued on training at Baltimore School for the Arts, where I went to high school. And then after high school, I went to California Institute of the Arts, where I continued wow. to study acting in mm -hmm. college. And that was wow. Wow, that's amazing. So you were on the wire at 14. Oh, my <laughs> Lord. Yeah, okay, so I have to confess, Imani, I didn't watch all the episodes, but could you please talk about your role and what you did and how long you shot and all the all the juicy details? Sure. So I was on season four, which is when they um, really showcase the public school system. Mm. I, um, I had a recurring role. I My name was Maisha on the show. And I was like, you know, I was a student. I was pretty much a good student. I kind of talked back a little bit, but I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't um, a bad student or, or anything like that. But I, I, we were on there, I don't know, it was like 14 hour shoot days basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how was it working like with the stars and the other people? I mean, at 14, wow, Iman, that's powerful. Yeah. That's very impressive. 
Thank you. Yeah, I don't think I realized like what I was even doing at the time. I was just happy, <laughs> you know, being from the camera. But I think that as I grew older, like now I can sit back and be, wow, that was pretty huge. But at the time, I just think I was going with the flow and living in the moment. Mm -hmm. But now mm -hmm. I'm so impressed by myself. <laughs> wow. I see of the show. Now, you know, when people see you on shows, especially like that, that was like a hit, smash hit show. Mm -hmm. Were offers coming in left and right? How was that? No, I don't think I was having offers coming left and right. I didn't, my next big show wasn't until like years later on HBO's The Deuce. Mm -hmm. um, so I did mostly like theater at the time and I was still training. I didn't have an agent. I wasn't going on lots of auditions. I was still like, you know, just learning. But um, so like after college, um, I got hired to work on HBO's The Deuce. On the pilot, I was actually a PA. Oh, wow. Then season one, I got asked to be um, the writer's assistant. And then I also had a role on season one also, which was so wow. exciting. And then season <laughs> two and three, I got promoted to be one of the executive producer assistants. So I was really behind the scenes most of the time. Most of my 20s, actually, I was behind the scenes. We didn't what? stop season three until 2019. And then shortly after COVID happened. So now I'm really trying to get back in front of the camera. But I also have found a love and passion for writing and creating narratives for myself to actually act in. So that's wow. my, yeah, my, my new passion. I wow. Just, mm -hmm. That is good. So what kind of um, stories are you writing for yourself to, to, to star in or what, what, well, what do you plan to do? Yeah, my current project is titled Three Blind Mice. Oh, and wow. I created this because at the time, I wrote this years ago. At the time, I didn't see any narratives on TV that I could really relate to. And I feel like there's a lots of different Black narratives that have not been touched on. Like the Black experience is just so colorful mm -hmm. and so broad. And I think that um, I wanted to showcase a specific entity. And I also was born, my mom had me when she was in college at Lincoln University, the first HBCU. And till, still to this day, I regret not going to an HBCU. Mm. So I'm also trying to kind of fulfill my fantasy in that way um, because her friends in college are still my, my godparents and they're still wow. close. And I really loved and looked up to her friendships. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of wanted to recreate that, but I'm also obsessed with 90s black content. I <laughs> love it so much. And I kind of wanted to bring that vibe and energy into today's programming for millennials. So that's kind of how I came up with Three Blind Mice. And yes, I do intend on starring in it. Um, you're actually supposed to be filming this fall in Baltimore. It's been a long mm -hmm. time coming. Lots of ups and downs with this mm -hmm. project. So I'm really excited to finally put it out there that is amazing so is three blind mice a series or a movie it's a series but we're just going to be um filming the short a short of it mm -hmm. but it is a series that i wrote wow i am like so excited and you know imani this is a good time i mean did yeah. you hear about Issa ray this eight-figure deal she received yeah. and so yeah. it's like this is the time to go forward. And uh, I am so proud of you and congratulate you for this. Thank you. Wow. Wow. So um, anybody else in mind that you uh, you want to star in this with you or how is that uh, set up? Well, we actually, I actually have it fully cast, which is exciting. They're brilliant. Our chemistry is fantastic. I do know that... Um, when the time comes when you know production company wants to pick it up we will have to have like a big name mm -hmm. but um hopefully that can be like a secondary character because i really do believe in the cast that i have chosen like new faces i think is important to give people chances mm -hmm. so we we will really see yeah well, you, you know maybe you you know the Issa rave model how she put it on youtube and got all those uh followings and they then you know, Insecure on HBO. 
you know, yeah, yeah. maybe that's a thought. But I know when you put out money and invest like that, you need it back. <laughs> <laughs> But, well, Imani, maybe uh, in lieu of a star, maybe a star producer, you know? What are your thoughts on that? I would love that, for sure. Definitely love that, yes. We are fully funded and we are, you know, looking for crew. Um, so I, I, I'm always open to have people join, people who are smarter in areas than I am to help bring this to life, always. Well, sound like me and you need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> You're smart, Imani, but you know, we, we. I would love to talk with you about it because I think you're on to something. And not only that, uh, the timing for this is so ripe and um, you know, definitely need to do it. So uh, any thoughts once it's finished, the shoot, and it's in post. Any thoughts of where you want to uh, run uh, some test screenings, if you will, on it? No, I definitely would like to show it to my mentor, the HBO, um, mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I think I have to go to break. Well, <laughs> we'll be right back after these messages. You're listening to Talk with Tara, presented by African American Woman in Cinema, right here on Rudy Radio. Formula One driver. I spent to get to Long Island Telecom before they closed. I need to get one of these fantastic deals that Long Island Telecom has because you can't beat the price anywhere else. Oh, get away from that car. What are you doing? Freaking kids playing with the car out there. Anyway, I'm glad I got here. Wait, what do you mean you're closing? I got to come back tomorrow? What's your number? 631-833-9679? Oh, stop writing me a ticket. We're having a conversation with African-American filmmakers. Join the African-American Women in Cinema Filmmaker Series at the Clubhouse. Presented by I Am the Color of Beautiful Global. Every Monday night, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. AAWIC on Clubhouse. Join us on the Clubhouse app for this inspiring conversation. Hosted by Karen Moore, founder of I Am The Color of Beautiful Global. Join us this Monday at 6 p.m. on the Clubhouse app for African American Women in Cinema's Filmmaker Series. Hey, this is Jewel Taker from the Jewel Taker Show on Impact Network. Also, you can watch me and my family on The Tankers on Prime Amazon or watch me and my sister's Chatter Talk Show on Fox. So me and my girls, Dr. Dee Dee Freeman, Monique Islet Mosley, Real Talk Kim, and Holly Carter. And you're watching Rudy Radio. Welcome back to Talk with Tara. I am Tara Renee from African American Woman in Cinema. And today we're talking to Imani. What a creative force from Baltimore. Imani, uh, we were talking before we went to break on the strategy, uh, the roadmap that you are mapping out to take your uh, film and uh, for test run, if, if I can position it that way. And I do like the idea of showing it to, you know, your mentor over at, at HBO. Any other thoughts? What about a private screening? And I know, you know, COVID is still in the atmosphere, but any thoughts about doing a private screening? 
I'd absolutely love to do a private screening. I love to show it anywhere that I can, honestly. And also I would like to submit to film festivals as well. Um, and also of course, pitch it to different networks. Well, you know, we have a film festival, the African-American Women in Cin Cinema Film Festival is coming up in November. Um, not sure, you know, how far along the process, but we'll be talking way before then, mm -hmm. but November 4th through the 6th. So that's something to think about uh, as well. And I, I am really um, curious because Imani, you know, a lot of our listeners and, and I love them uh, are very young. They're millennials. And so I tried to make sure that, you know, the guests that we have on uh, speak to them and just give them some sort of an insight that they probably would not get immediately uh, from anywhere else as it relates to uh, a show such as this. Can you talk about some of the process? Like I heard you stated earlier saying, you know, there were some ups, there were some downs. You want to give a little insight to that because what I find Imani is that I get these beautiful young people with gigantic stars in their eyes and they just think, you know, well, all I have to do is go to school and then boom, I'm a big star getting an Oscar. Yeah. Please inform my beautiful young people some of what really goes on for real. Right. Well, I'm very much so right brained. I'm just very creative. And I've learned in this industry, it's so important to have your business in order. So I'm learning um, how to become a businesswoman, which has been, you know, has had its challenges. Um, also, I realized the importance of paperwork um, and honoring that. Um, I've, I've understand how to like work with different people and the importance of building relationships. Um, I also learned the importance of like, I have to really choose and be very diligent on who I want to bring on my team because, you know, you, you can't pay someone to care about your idea. <laughs> and I learned that too. Um, so it, it's been hard. I mean, I've tried doing this project for almost five years now with three different production companies. And um, at this point, I now have my own production company. <laughs> based oh, on congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. So, I don't know, I'm really happy though that it, it, it turned out this way because if I really tried to put this project out four years ago, it would not, it wouldn't have been good. And I, 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 I just, I just developed a lot during these, um, setbacks, I'll say. And I think those are really important to have for your development because um, how else, you know, will you grow? And my writings also has improved. So I made changes to the script. I just completed my um, professional program in screenwriting at UCLA. I just think it's really important to also um, hone in on your craft, take classes, um, keep practicing, keep keep developing. I think that's also important for people to do. Even if you're an actor, it's also important important to keep on um, going into classes, just like a singer. Even Beyonce, I'm sure, has a vocal coach. So to keep your craft exercise is important. To understand the business side is very, very important. Um, and to honor relationships. So that's what I would say I've learned during these years. And also keep the faith too, because I mean, I've, I've, you know, I've definitely have lost faith in myself um, throughout this process, and um, that's also why I chose to name my production company Faith and Purpose because my name Imani Mia means faith purpose. So I think that if I live by those two concepts, then I think that I can be unstoppable. So it always starts with the mind. The mind is a very powerful thing. So what you think and say comes to fruition. So if you can control that and master that, then I think anything's possible. That's true, Imani. Well, first of all, kudos, congratulations uh, for keeping the faith. And you're right. You know, a lot of times 
uh, when folks get into the industry and not understanding the dynamics, uh, they, you know, get discouraged because the level of endurance and then there is a lot of rejection, you know, uh, because it's so competitive. And if you don't have someone there just basically being a support system, I can see how people just say, forget it. And uh, one of the uh, movies I've seen that Robert Townsend starred in, he said, there's work at the post office. I don't know if I would go that far and say yeah. that. But, <laughs> 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 but anyway, um, you should definitely, you know, keep the faith. Imani, question for you. How you, you just gave like, such detail lay of the land advice you know and um that i think anyone listening should be able to take it and run but i want to pose a scenario to you and hear your your thoughts on it so we have a young girl 18 years old inspiring writer and she's coming from a very challenging environment and what i mean by that is you know she's not fortunate to have both parents in the home uh the living environment tends to be a little unstable because her mother's dealing with a lot of challenges how can someone like that and she's not exposed to uh anyone who could assist her in writing uh, there's not an after school program anywhere. Uh, there's not a community center uh, program available. And her mother cannot afford for her to go to school. Mm -hmm. So what, how can someone navigate uh, powering their creative talent through a situation like that? I mean, I would tell her just to give me a call. I would love to assist and be somewhat of a mentor for her. Um, I would also utilize Google and maybe mm -hmm. look up different prompts, writing prompts to um, use those as exercises for her creative writing as well. Um, and so I would probably do starting off, I would probably also ask my friends to read my writing and maybe um, call a bunch of friends and have a table read so that you can hear how your writing sounds out loud. If you were to have actors performing the script. So those are some things I would definitely do. And then perhaps also submit your script into screen reading contests. But before doing that, I would highly recommend that you read the fine print so that way, you know, your idea won't, won't get stolen. So those are some ideas I would have to share for her. That's great. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. Really appreciate that. Imani, uh, you know, I know that you started out really, really young and got bit by the acting bug uh, at a young age. But what point through this process from then up until now gave you that confirmation that says, you know, yes. I am on the path that I was born to be on. What can you describe what moment confirmed that for you? Hmm. Um, I think because God just keeps blessing me with opportunities. I think that's the confirmation. And of course, my mom's like the biggest supporter in the world. And she always supports me, encourages me. So that's also confirmation. That's what, that's what I would say. And then also how I feel when I'm performing, I feel very happy. <laughs> so I think that's also confirmation because this is like the, I, I'm just so good at it, I feel, and I don't know what else I would be doing if it wasn't this. Wow, that's amazing. And big ups for moms because yeah. that <laughs> is so important. You know, parents, I, you know, I keep telling parents all the time, your words have weight with your children. <laughs> that is amazing so outside of what you're writing down what you're working on now three blind mice what else are you doing i'm also working on 
an animation project. Oh, wow. Um, producing that. Mm -hmm. um, I just got done with my writing team. We wrote um, a series for a, a different animation, actually. Um, also underneath my production company, I have five acting students, um, children and young adults that I teach one-on-one -on -one acting. So I also do that as well as wow. a too. So I'm just trying to keep busy learning how to navigate my um, production company. And it's been really fun. I started this during COVID, so I had a lot of time to sit and think and execute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, COVID, I tell you, COVID came in and we all had to sit down and think. <laughs> we did, we did, we did. had no choice. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. Awesome. So you say you teach acting? Yep, I do one-on-one -on -one acting coaching. Wow, okay. Well, I want to hear more about that. But right now, we'll be right back after these messages. You're listening to Talk with Tara, presented by African American Woman in Cinema, right here on Rudy Radio. Executive Director for Maureen's Haven Homeless Outreach. It is our mission to support the homeless in our community. We provide an emergency winter shelter program, a day center, and support services to help the homeless in our community. With your help, we can continue to provide services so critically needed to the homeless in our community. Please visit www.maureenshaven.org or call us at 631-727-683. Welcome back. You're talking with Tara Renee. I am Tara Renee from African American Woman in Cinema. And today we have the talented, talented Imani, who is telling us everything that's going on. And we so deeply appreciate it. Imani, uh, talk to me about your your acting coach what method do you use or do you use a method when teaching acting or coaching oh yes so basically i just use what i've learned during my training throughout the years um i also really enjoy children and interacting with them um children have the most you know the biggest creative minds such imagination and they just put their all into it so working with them reminds me of why I fell in love with acting to begin with. So I just love it. I really do. That is good. You know, um, I have to ask you this. I have heard a couple of times where, uh, for example, the movie Judas and the Black Messiah mm -hmm. and uh, heard that I believe it was the lead actor had to get counseling uh, because of the role that he took. Mm -hmm. um what 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 actually do you think you know cause a situation where an actor gets into a role and now they have to get counseling behind it <laughs> yeah i mean um i think as an actor as a good actor you do your homework you do your research and you put your all into it your whole being becomes mm. this this person and mm. whether it's um, a good person, a person who's, who has its demons, its traumas, mm -hmm. you just yourself in that world and mm. it can just, you know, overtake everything. And I mean, that's good for, you know, the project, but it, it is important to keep your mind healthy and to be able to distinguish the difference between the creation and reality. So, I mean, that's that, I haven't had to go through that extents, um, extent of the character at this time, but I imagine it can be quite 
difficult in that regard. Yeah, especially, you know, when you have and then you have to be believable. So you have to go you have to go there. Yeah. You have to take on that trauma. You have to take on whatever demons that they were dealing with. That's amazing. I didn't look at it from that perspective. Mm -hmm. And yeah, now I can see why someone would need some help after yeah. that. It's like, whoa. So, um, you know, uh, the other question that I have for you is who inspires you, Imani, to do what you do? Mm, well, definitely my mom, first and foremost. Um, my one of my biggest idols is Dorothy Dandridge. I'm pretty oh. much with her. Um, I think I saw on on your on your web on your bio um, Dorothy Dandridge Award. <laughs> I mm -hmm. pretty much got so excited. <laughs> um, I also very much um, adore Nell Carter. Oh, yeah. um, so those 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 women those women inspire me. Diane Carroll, for sure. The classics. Wow. I'm impressed, Imani, because you look like you're 10 years old. I'm saying, how do you know all these women? <laughs> I love them so much, honestly. The class, um, the talent, fantastic. But more like, you know, more modern. Um, I really do enjoy comedy, so I would love to work with, um, you know, Jim Carrey. Um, I would, even though you know what's happening isn't un is unfortunate in her career, I would really love to work with Monique one day. I think she's hysterical and very talented, and um, Paul Giamatti and Sterling K. Brown. I think those would be those people inspire me when I see them perform. Um, it excites me and it reminds me of why I'm doing this. Wow. And you know, Sterling K. Brown, he, you're absolutely right. The first time I saw his work was in, uh, what was it, the United States versus O.J. Simpson? Oh, yeah. And he yeah. played, oh, my Lord. You know, for a minute, I knew it wasn't him, but I said, is, is that the prosecutor? <laughs> he was so good. <laughs> So that's when I first saw him and discovered his work. And then when he was in Marshall, did you see him in Marshall? Actually, I didn't see that. No, I need to watch that and write that down. Yes, yeah, Chad Boswick played uh, Thurgood Marshall and he played The Help. And what an amazing job he did. He's just absolutely amazing. So, yeah, I would love to see him in more roles as well. That was very good. What about Angela Bissett? You like her work? Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. Viola Davis. Viola oh, Davis, she's, of course, she's the best. <laughs> yep, she's the best. You know, uh, Viola is just unapologetic. And to to be nominated for an Oscar uh, with a two-minute screen time, from that two-minute screen time with Meryl Streep. Yeah, that was, was, that was so cool seeing those two Imagine mm -hmm. together. <laughs> that was awesome. And she let it all hang out. Snot everything. I said, wow. <laughs> she, really can tap, she easily taps in to it. Yeah. It's definitely a gift. Yeah. Yeah. I first noticed her in Antoine Fisher. Did you see that movie? Yeah, I did see that. Yes. And I kept saying, who is this woman? <laughs> yeah. You're right. She I can get to... Her. First mm -hmm. James Brown movie, I think it's when I, I saw her first, I think. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. And you're right. She can tap into those emotions and feelings like in a second. And it's so real, rich, and powerful. True. I think that's her her uh her claim to fame, if you will. Mm -hmm. You're right. Wow. Any directors you like or inspire you? Mm. I mean, I would just be, I would just, I mean, of course, Ava DuVernay, of course. Mm -hmm. I think she would be on the top of the list. Mm. Mm -hmm. What about, you know, um, I watched the film One Night in Miami and I realized it was directed by Regina King. 
Did you see that movie? I thought it was directed by, oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's getting into it. And then uh, another actress I heard that's getting into it is Taraji. Yeah. Did you hear about that? I did, yeah. And she's directing Jennifer Hudson and Pauletta Washington. And I loved actually Pauletta Washington in the Genius series on the National Geographic. Uh, she played Aretha Franklin's grandmother. Did you see any of those episodes? I, yeah, I didn't get to finish it, but I did see a few of the episodes. And it was- you uh, saw, <laughs> go, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> no, I just knew it was just, it was just sad. So I wasn't able to complete it. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> but it was good. <laughs> 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 did you see Pauletta Washington in it? I did, yes. Yeah, yeah, she was good. She was good. That whole family, uh, the Washingtons, are really uh, doing an amazing work and contributing in the film industry in such a unique way. Uh, John, John Washington, uh, his work in Black Klansmen. I didn't realize he was Denzel's son. Did you I see that movie? It. Yeah, I didn't realize it either until later after I watched it. He sounds like him though. Yeah, looking back, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we'll be right back after these messages. You're listening to Talk with Tara, presented by African American Woman in Cinema, right here on Rudy Radio. Hi, I'm Dan O'Shea, Executive Director for Maureen's Haven Homeless Outreach. It is our mission to support the homeless in our community. We provide an emergency winter shelter program, a day center, and support services to help the homeless in our community. With your help, we can continue to provide services so critically needed to the homeless in our community. Please visit www.moreningshaven.org or call us at 631-727-683. Welcome back. I am Tara Renee from African American Woman in Cinema. And today we are talking with the creative force from Baltimore, Miss Imani. Imani, can you share some of your highlights, the moments that just made you laugh in your journey uh, in what you're doing? Do you have any funny moments you would like to share? Hmm. <laughs> well i think yes um working on there's this play called colored museum and james avery actually co-directed me in that wow i was working on you know a very humorous scene and just you no, know, it's just seeing, just, you know, just working with him and like laughing, laughing about it with him and um, hearing him. He, he gave lots of like long talks about, you know, black history, um, the industry. And so I don't know, that always sticks in my mind, sticks in my head mm -hmm. with him mm -hmm. on that moment. Um. He seemed, and I, I don't want to mess up your train of thought, but he seemed like he was such a fun guy. I loved him in Fresh Prince of Bel Air. I just thought that he was the most huggable character, meaning me yeah. wanted to hug him. <laughs> yeah. uh, the yeah, teddy man. bear. <laughs> I know. Meeting him, I don't know, he just had such poise and um, mm -hmm. with such knowledge. And, um, I, don't know, I, remember I I was very intimidated meeting him at first, but he he has he does have so much love and um, so much to give, and um, it was it was honestly it was an honor working with him. I'm so mm -hmm. happy I have that that memory mm -hmm. for sure. Did you get a chance to meet Tatiana Ellie at all? No, no, I did not get to meet her. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah, he seemed well. You know. Uh, you know, thank God that he was able to contribute and share his talent uh, when he was among us. But he just seemed to his presence was just so strong. And it came through the television that anywhere he went, 
he just like set the tone of the room. Did you feel that when you met him? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Very poignant. Every time I, he entered the room. Um, yeah, it was always silent. We were, he would just spew all this information to us. Mm. And, um, was so helpful. Mm -hmm. I also, I got to meet Joseph Marcel as well. Oh yeah. Yeah. How was that? I just felt so excited, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> that show so much. So it was just so cool to see them both in the room together. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That is good. You know, um, Imani, I had the opportunity to go to California and go to, uh, the Paramount Studios, which I found very interesting. Have you ever had the chance to go there, out there? I didn't go to the, No, I haven't been to the Paramount Studios. Okay, well, when you have the opportunity, certainly recommend it. They still have the buildings from the 1920s. Very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Any, um, have you ever seen any of the Oscar Michelle films? I can't think of any on top of my head. Mm-hmm. Maybe if you make what's what's one that maybe will jog my memory. Well, uh, there was one. Now my memory got lost, but <laughs> <laughs> I recall watching the Oscar Michelle film where it starred Paul Robeson, and he plays a preacher. This one was in uh, the eighteen hundreds, and I was just fascinated. The fact that I'm seeing this film from the eighteen hundreds and seeing these actors and uh who look like us and i was just blown away by that yeah and, and so we actually so, mm, go ahead saying it, it took place and so you were thinking about that as you went to paramount yeah yes yeah. i was That's yes i was history. and uh i said wow you know uh and there were many more productions as well but they d just did not get the level of visibility like how productions are getting the visibility today. And um, I am so grateful that, you know, we are in this unique time that uh, globally folks want to hear our stories. They want to see our work. And uh, as I was sharing with uh, a few associates uh, of mine, I said, now's the time to jump in. Even if you don't have a deal, start a blog. You know, the beautiful thing about technology is that you can create, put it up there and draw traffic to it. So I'm encouraging everyone who has writing skills, who have uh, storytelling skills to go forth and uh, make it happen. And don't be shy about it. You know, I don't think this is the season to be shy. What about you? It can't be, it mustn't, because you don't want to be like, wish I would have, should have, could have. <laughs> that is so true. I'm I'm fascinated about your animation uh, that you're doing. Could you talk a little bit about what uh, the story that you all are covering in your animation? Sure. Um, the first one was basically, it was about principles. Mm -hmm. um, the importance of principles in the school system, specifically black principles and how they can become like superheroes. Um, mm. Touched on like different topics with that. And the mm -hmm. second one is actually for my mother's, um, her business, Black Girls Eat. So oh. um, it's about a child named Noni Malene who um, teaches children all things health and wellness for nutrition, mm -hmm. mental health, um, social injustices, exercise so working on that right now it's really exciting and it's, it's really really cute so and cute. that's good and that's important because young kids need to know how to eat right and you know uh i remember lis listening to uh our former first lady michelle obama and understanding that they have a, a netflix deal and one of the things that she did talk about was her project really in the same vein of teaching young people how to eat. But then she said, when they did the, the program, they realized that there were many young people who were in food insecurity situations. Mm -hmm. 
And so they had to end up donating, uh, if I remember her correctly, some of their proceeds, but also making available information as to where, you know, food could be received to make sure that children are eating, are eating and then yeah. eating correctly. Right. Yeah. Right. We, uh, we also touched on like mental health and how children oh. they have um, dealt with, you know, COVID and the world shifting. So we have different topics like that. And we have also a child host on Zoom who actually interviews adult superheroes who wow. are in different health professions and can like teach the kids. So it's really exciting. It's definitely needed and I'm happy to be a part of it. That is good. That is good. Well, can you please um, let the audience know where they can follow you on social media? Of course, you can follow me at Imani Nia Robinson. My phone. Oh, <laughs> and is that on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter? Yep. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know where the time went. They're telling me we have to in the show and imani you are amazing i'm definitely going to be in contact with you shortly and uh we wish you certainly continued success and thank you audience so much for listening uh to talk with tara i am tara and a from african-american women in cinema organization and you can visit us at www.aawic.org you can also follow us on instagram and twitter and like us on Facebook. Talk with Tara is made possible by Rude Rangers Entertainment. Our creative director is Rudy J. Breedy. Please don't forget to like and share this episode with as many people as possible. We sincerely appreciate you joining us today and wish you continued peace, blessings, and prosperity. See you next episode.